So hi, uh, my name is Allison. Um, I do our marketing and communications at Global Giving as well as all of our social media. So hopefully if you're in this call as opposed to the earlier call this morning, um, you know, you are established on social networks, you at least have your names registered. Um, you've probably used it so you know the ins and outs, but maybe you just don't know how to maximize your experience there. If you want to be more social online for your organization, um, great, you know, we want to get you there. There's a lot of networks, um, you know, that, that can be really intimidating. Social media, as you probably know, is, is all about user-generated content. My guess is that many of you probably understand the, the use or benefit or perks of social media personally. Um, you know, many of you might have a, a Facebook page, say, um, and you probably think it's great, you know, okay, great, I can keep connected with some of my friends or my relatives or share pictures from events. Um, that's a really easy concept, a way to understand um, this kind of social media, but it's not just that. And you're probably wondering, okay, I understand why I would want to share pictures with my friends or my family, but, you know, why do I want to use um, this communications form uh, for my organization. Um, so think about it this way, you know, social media is you um, plus collaboration. And, and that's how you want to think about using social media in your everyday activities at work or in life. You um, read the paper um, in the morning, you know, so you read it, you sit down, you read it, you, you read some articles by yourself. But we don't just read the paper anymore, you know, through through social uh, media and networks and, you know, online news, we don't just read it. You know, the, the paper says hello to us in the morning now. And um, the paper shows us what our friends are reading um, and, and what's popular. And that's not a new concept either. I mean, if your friend read a great article, they would probably tell you about it or they'd email it to you or, you know, they'd tell you about it over the phone. That's not a new concept. People shared information that they read all the time before social media. This is just an outlet for it. Um, again, you know, if you look at news sites, they give you all these options of, you know, what's the most popular emailed article? What's the most popular blogged article um, or searched or viewed? Again, this isn't, this isn't new. Um, we talk about things that we read and, and information that we consume all the time. This is just putting an algorithm to it and publishing it. Um, again, you know, you can share. It gives you all these um, opportunities to share articles that you like. My mother's been doing this for ages. My mother still cuts articles out of the paper and, and sends them to me in the mail. Um, and this is just sort of the more digital way of doing it. You know, you're sharing an article. You're, you're cutting it out of the website and posting it on your own. You know, in the morning, you might drink coffee. Um, but drinking coffee isn't just drinking coffee anymore. Your coffee place has a Facebook page. Um, and they want you to enroll in their perks program. And they want you to like it. And they want you to be the fan of the week. And maybe you have an app on your phone that shows you where your favorite coffee place is so that you can find it. Um, you know, maybe you listen to the radio on your drive into work in the morning, but we don't just listen to the radio anymore. We share the radio and we rate the radio and we say what songs are good and we say what songs we like and we create stations so that we get music we like all the time and that we make a better listening experience for ourselves, for other people. We share songs that we've listened to that we really like. Maybe when you're at work, you go to a conference, um, but we're, we don't just go to conferences anymore. Conferences come to us. Um, last week, the Clinton Global Initiative happened, and the entire thing was live streamed um, in, in very high quality video. Um, you could see all of the, the big sessions. You could, um, you know, you could look at other information. They had articles. They had past sessions. Um, so, you know, maybe uh, a couple thousand people were at this conference, but then double that was watching online. Um, you know, so then I didn't go to the conference, but I could talk about it with all these different people who were also watching it. You know, they had uh, a hashtag and people talked about it on Twitter. So I didn't have to be there and I could interact with people who were also experiencing this same conference. Maybe after work you eat dinner. Um, but we don't just eat dinner anymore. We talk about our dinner. We rate our dinner. We say what's good. Um, again, this isn't a new experience. Um, if you go to a restaurant, it, you're, you're naturally inclined to want to tell somebody that you went to a restaurant that was really good or you had a really good meal or you would really recommend um, some dessert.
you know, if I didn't know Washington, D.C., and I came here and, and wanted to find a really good Moroccan restaurant, I could find one based on this user content. If I'm in a city and I, I don't know where to eat or I want to find something really good, you know, there's an app where you can say, oh, this is where I am, this is the kind of food I want, this is the price range I want, help me find a restaurant. And it's based off of user feedback. Um, you, you might watch TV when you go home. Um, you know, but we're, we're not just watching TV anymore. If you watch a, a, a sports game, you know, you can watch online and you can talk to other people who are watching the game, um, even if they're not there with you. And TV shows aren't just on TV anymore. Um, you know, TV shows have to have a website and they have a Facebook page and they have a Twitter page and they have a YouTube account and they have a Hulu account because people don't watch TV on television anymore. Um, you know, people watch it when it's convenient for them. So they're watching clips on YouTube and they're watching reruns on Hulu and they're watching on the network's website. Mad Men, they did a really great campaign last year and this year to promote their new season. Um, you know, this was probably better than any t television advertisement or print advertisement they could have put together um, because it involved um, all the fans. So they created this platform called Mad Men Yourself where you could create an animated uh, avatar that looked like you and you could dress it up in the you know 60s era clothing and give it accessories and it would look like you. Um, and people posted it on their Facebook page and they posted it on their Twitter account and they put it on their blogs and they showcased it everywhere and so you would see these animated cartoon 60s era figures that looked like people you knew and they were everywhere um, and it was a great viral spread of this kind of marketing for a show that was better than any just one advertisement on television than they could have done because people still use these characters as their as their profile picture so you might be asking okay I don't have a television show and you know I don't own a restaurant and so how does this apply to me so <clears throat> You know, people used to just give to charity. They'd donate clothes or they'd donate money just because they'd get a tax break or it made them feel good or um, they wanted to help the community. But that's changing too. Here's some examples. Um, you know, this is a bigger campaign going on um, called Twit Change where celebrities are, are donating their um, celebrity status and you can bid on them and, and they'll follow you on Twitter or they'll retweet you or they'll talk to you. There's an, I, an iPhone and a droid app. Um, Cause World is an organization that we work with. Um, you check in when you go to um, stores or restaurants, stuff that you already do. You know, you see there's an Ann Taylor on there, a Tommy Bahama, places that you would know. Um, and when you go there, you say that you're there and you get some points because you're there and you accumulate enough points and you can re, um, you can, you can cash those points in as a donation to charity. This is a video that the Girl Effect, another one of our partners put together. They launched their new one at the Clinton Global Initiative and they just put it on YouTube. This is a, a screenshot of my, of my Twitter column about the Girl Effect. Um, people are talking about it. YouTube page. Um, from the one campaign. They do a really good job with all their videos, so they put together a really nice YouTube page um, that has all their videos where people can go and find them and share them and send them to other people. This is the Humane Society's Facebook page. Um, you know, they listed all of their, their state organizations, um, you know, so that you can find the, the uh, fan page in your area. We work with Pepsi Refresh. Um, they're big on the social sharing. You know, they have all these links on the side to promote it. They have their short URL. They have a widget for you to include. You can install an application on Facebook um, because they want you to show other people so that other people can vote. This is all about voting. So I voted and it came up in my Facebook feed. It says, you know, vote to give this idea $50,000. And I wrote, I just voted. And then I published it on, on Twitter, and I, it says, vote to give this idea $50,000. And you can see I did a search on Twitter. It's, it shows all these other people who also voted for things and, and what they voted for. A campaign around Mother's Day with Mother's Day cards, and people could write their message to their mom, and it would show on this map that you see behind this message um, where they were. So you could see where people were wishing mothers, Happy Mother's Day all around the world. That was a cool interactive example. The Nature Conservancy um, a photo competition, I think they do it um, every year, and so they feature all the great photos that they have on Flickr so people can go on there. 
on our site, um, which you're probably more familiar with, you know, you have a project on our site. All of our um, all of our projects are hooked up to, to Social Connect sites. Um, so you can see down at the bottom of this page, um, you can click that you like it on Facebook and it shows how many people like it. All of, all of the projects have this. Also, after your second donate button, um, you'll see your, your sharing buttons and it shows how many people have also shared this. We give you a share button in your receipt. So obviously you can print your receipt for your records, um, but then you can share it on Facebook. So look, Kevin made a donation to the Stop Malaria campaign on Global Giving and he shared it and he told other people, look, I made this donation. So people are talking about these things more. This is just our Facebook page. Um, you know, we post articles, we post information and news. We did a photo competition on Facebook earlier this year um, where projects submitted their photos and we put them on Facebook for people to vote. Um, this is our Twitter page. We have over 17,000 followers. We post a lot of information and news about projects or campaigns, um, new projects, pictures, if we're at a conference, things like that. I assume many of you have already started, but just to kind of direct you a little bit more, um, think about what are your objectives? What does success look like for your organization? Um, and maybe this is a gradual success. Um, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna see results in this overnight. Um, it's all about building a network and a community. Um, most people can't just walk into a room of people they don't know and become the most popular person. And that's sort of what this um, equates to, is that you're walking into a, a room of people you don't know and, and you wanna just talk to them and you wanna make connections. What does success look like in the short term, what does success look like in the long term? And we're gonna actually go over that a little bit more as well. Um, again, is your audience already on a network? Um, if they are, um, if you have a bunch of, you know, if, if you're a visual organization, you have a bunch of great pictures, make sure you're on Flickr. Um, does your organization specialize in a media that has its own network? Just like I was saying, um, you know, Facebook and Twitter are some of the more popular uh, social interaction networks. Um, but there's a bunch of networks that specialize in, in media um, for video or photos or blogging or, or selling products. So if that's what you specialize in, make sure you're there as well. Um, and then again, does your country or region have its own popular network? First steps, uh, only commit to as many networks as you have resources for. It's better to be active in fewer networks than not active in many networks. Um, it's okay to reserve your name on all of those networks. In fact, that's sort of pre preferable because you want to be consistent, you know, and maybe at some point you'll have a bigger staff or more resources, something, and you can devote more time. Um, but be consistently active on as many as you can handle. Um, identify a lead. Many people can contribute. That's what's great about social media is that it's social and it's interactive, but make sure there is a, a, a director of activities, if you will. Um, you know, you don't wanna repeat messages. You don't wanna have conflicting messages. Uh, so make sure there's somebody who's kind of orchestrating what's going on just to make sure everything's kind of um, ship shape. Uh, Create guidelines fitting to your organization. There's a lot of great examples out there. If you do a Google search for social media guidelines and organizations, um, figure out what works for your organization. Uh, maybe you need something that's really strict. Uh, maybe you need something that is, is really specific to um, your, your group. You know, maybe you have a lot of legal stuff that needs to be run by people. Um, maybe you don't. Maybe the extent of your rules is don't say silly things or you know don't post anything your your mother wouldn't want to you wouldn't want your mother to read um, figure out what works for your organization obviously you want to encourage people to spread your message and you got to let that message go just a little bit but you know make sure it, it results in a uh, healthy outcome for your organization know who your allies and stakeholders are um, again, this could be people, your supporters, your coworkers, people already on these networks. Um, you know, identify who they are and identify people that you need to demonstrate positive outcomes to. Um, and lastly, know who you're on. You can talk about news, um, whether it's about your organization or if it's just current day news uh, that might be relevant. Uh, events that you're putting on or that might be interesting to people. Um, 
who like your cause. Pictures are great. Beneficiary stories are great. Articles about your organization. Um, articles just about your cause. Obviously, if people are interested in your organization, they're interested in your cause. Um, donor opportunities. So our, our matching campaign that's coming up, you might want to talk about. Um, feedback, good and bad. Obviously, it's great to toot your own horn. Um, but you don't want to hide bad feedback. Uh, people will call you out if you start deleting negative comments. Um, you know, but let your network defend you. Uh, we had a great example a while back. We put up a article on Facebook about donating to relief efforts in Pakistan after the flooding. And a bunch of people liked it, and then one person commented, well, you know, I really think you should focus your efforts on the United States. We have plenty of people suffering here at home. Why are we giving money overseas? And I didn't comment. That's a, that's a portion of feedback that we hear uh, every now and then from people, and they're entitled to their opinion. So I didn't say anything. But not 30 minutes later, six or seven people had commented and explained to him why it is important to help other people and why these people are in need and why we should help Pakistan. And I didn't have to do anything. Um, they, they did it for me because they felt as passionately about this cause as I did. Um, you know, but also take note of bad feedback because it's possible, it's true. Um, <clears throat> You know, maybe somebody is giving you constructive feedback about something that you might want to uh, consider. Um, so sometimes it's a good outlet for that. Um, you could talk about insider information. Uh, obviously, that's not, you know, something that you don't want to be made public, but we talk about birthdays or when we reach internal milestones or um, big accomplishments in the office. That's always interesting. It just kind of shows that there's human beings that work there and that. Uh, you know, you're more than just your cause. Videos are great. Questions for your network, you know, get people talking or thinking. Uh, new features, um, links for part from partners or blogs. This creates some goodwill. Um, also, it creates some content that isn't just about you. Um, promotions for other people. Again, it creates some goodwill of, you know, maybe they will reciprocate and post stuff about you. Volunteer opportunities, job openings. Um, you could also crowdsource. We're going to talk a little bit about a social media 90 day plan. These are just some outlines uh, for you to think about. So, um, in your first 30 days, you want to establish guidelines. Um, and, you know, obviously, if you're already active, don't stop what you're doing to create this plan. But you know, take a step back and, and create this plan and then modify what you're doing. But in the first 30 days, establish some guidelines. Um, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, who can post, who shouldn't post. Maybe everybody can post. Maybe you only want one person to post. Um, think about those things. And then the important thing, too, is to share these guidelines with your entire organization. Um, because even though uh, social media tends to lie with the communications or marketing team, other people in your organization can use these platforms. Maybe they're not doing it in official capacity for your organization, but they might be doing it personally. Or maybe they're talking about your organization just because they love working there. So make sure you share it with everybody so everybody's just on the same page about what's appropriate or what's not. Um, you know, or, or you know, maybe you want to encourage people to do things and they didn't know if there were rules or not so you're explaining that there are rules or that there aren't rules or these are your your guidelines or whatever um, again identify or train allies and stakeholders these could be people who are already active and maybe you just want to give them um, fuel to talk about your organization um, you know, identify your stakeholders who it's important to be interacting with um, set your business priorities, um, you know, so so what's important to you as a business? What are you trying to achieve? How is this, um, how is this going to further your organization? Uh, again, secure branded platforms. Um, there's a site that I have included in your resources section at the end. It's called namecheck, N-A-M-E-C-H-K.com. Um, this is a pretty good site where you can put in your brand name or your, you know, whatever uh, moniker you're using on these networks to see if they're taken on, on other networks. 
I wouldn't say it's 100% accurate. I would say it's probably 90% accurate or 95% accurate, but it's a good start. Um, if, if, if you put in your name and you find that it's taken in a lot of places, you either want to try to retrieve your name back from those people or you want to go with something else. It's important to have consistency in your name across platforms. Um, set goals and, and strategies. Um, you know, again, decide what success looks like and, and what your milestones are and um, how you're going to achieve the big goals through smaller goals. The next 30 days, so by 60 days, um, you want to define targets you want to engage. So, you know, find out who the, who the big people are in your network, um, whether it's just the nonprofit world or it's, you know, in your cause space or, um, you know, in your area, your localized area. Find out who those people are, um, you know, whether it's, whether it's big because they have a lot of followers or friends or influence. Um, or it's just because they do influence people. Um, or, or maybe it's, uh, you know, donors. Maybe you want to reach out and find your donors. So to find the targets that you want to engage with, um, that actually just helps a lot in making it clear for you about what your purpose is. Um, you know, start sharing and testing messaging. Um, and when I say test messaging, I don't mean, um, you know, run it through a mill of, checks from people or, or do user testing, um, you can actively test messages on a live platform. You know, put some messages out there and see what's working and what's not working. See what people are engaging with and what they're not engaging with and take note of that because then you can put more stuff out there that people are interested in. And then don't be afraid to promote your wins. In the next 30 days, so by 90 days in, um, you know, again, review your progress. And this is just going to be a, a a, like a, a guide post. You don't have to stop. You know, you want to do periodic reviews. What's working? What has changed? What hasn't changed? What, um, you know, what new information could we add to the mix? Um, identify next steps for budget organization and tracking. Um, again, you know, decide, okay, is this something we can put more time into? Do we want to put more time into it? Do we want to put less time into it? Do we not have the resources to change our approach at all? Um, do we want to get a tracking tool? Do we want to hire somebody to do this full time? Do we want to hire somebody to do this part time? Do we want to get an intern? If, you know, things like that. Um, and then also, you know, make sure you're integrating it with other communications platforms and strategies like your print and your web and speeches and events that you're having. Um, you know. Social media doesn't need to exist in a silo. Um, just like any media communications platform, it should integrate with your total overall goals and strategies as an organization. Basic tips for Twitter. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with some of these, but we'll go over them anyway. Be authentic. Uh, people want to know there's a human being behind your brand, um, so it's okay to identify yourself. Some of the best brands out there, people know the individual behind it. Um, Dunkin' Donuts does a really great job of that. Um, SeaWorld used to do a really great job with that. Start and reply to conversations, especially ones about you or your cause. Um, stick to 140 characters or less if you want to be retweeted. Um, you know, I know Twitter has its own retweet function, but if you want people to be able to add commentary or whatever, remember that your retweet magic number is 140 characters minus your username plus six. So um, Global Giving's username is 12 characters, I think plus six is 18, so our magic number is 122. We want our messages to 122 characters to make sure people can retweet it. Um, remember the 80-20 rule, don't only talk about yourself. 80% um, needs to be informative and engaging and educational, um, and percent should be about your brand. So for every message you put out there about your brand, you gotta have about five other things that are not so promotional. Um, be conversational. You know, just ask questions or give opinions or share feedback or, or provide news. Facebook and Twitter are not the same platform. Post on them separately. Um, you don't want to see at names on Facebook. You can write a little bit more on Facebook than you can on Twitter. You want to link to pages on Facebook. You want to link to organization names or, or you know, hashtags on Twitter. Um, you know, they serve different purposes, so treat them separately. Um, at include people and organizations when you refer to them so they know you're talking about them. If you don't know their name, uh, 
do a Google search. It's really simple and it, it, um, it, it really enhances your, your profile. Um, use a URL shortener to save space. Obviously, you probably know that. Um, follower count is about quality, not quantity. Um, again, Twitter updates are not Facebook status updates. They, they serve different purposes. Um, use Twitter to crowdsource things um, or use Twitter to gain momentum for events. Um, and create in-person relationships. Regular interaction, but mind the 80-20 rule, post articles, pictures, questions, commentary. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely enable feedback on your wall and posts. Um, people don't like when they feel like you're putting up a wall and not allowing them to engage. Um, you might get negative feedback, but that's okay. Again, let your fans defend you, um, and they will unless somebody's identifying an actual problem. Um, and while I do encourage transparency and allowing people to comment. Um, it is okay if you have a rule posted in your information section about civility or offensive language. Um, if you take down posts that are just simply negative or, or a differing opinion from yours, people will call you out on it um, for not being transparent or for taking down negative things. Um, but you obviously don't want to offend anybody um, so if people are saying things that are offensive to you or a beneficiary or other people or they're saying things that are really inappropriate, something that's okay to take down. Um, you know, as long as you have that stated clearly about, you know, what your forum rules are, um, that's okay. And sometimes when people do that, they post a message that just says, um, you know, this post was removed for offensive content or something like that. Um, again, Facebook and Twitter are not the same platform. Please post on them separately. Um, add comments to articles um, that you post, you know, whether it's a quote or it's just why you posted it. It can even just be like, oh, this article features our director. Um, or even questions just to get people talking. Is this something you agree with? Uh, did, you, did you also read this article? Something like that. Um, and think about ways to engage your fans where they already are on Facebook. You know, you can send them to places off off platform, um, but think about ways that you can. You know, they're already there, so think about ways to keep them there. That's why we did our photo contest on Facebook. Um, <clears throat> how to start on Facebook? Again, you probably already are on there, but you know, make sure you have a a, a pay for your. Uh, your organization not a user profile. User profiles are for people. Pages are for organizations. Um, make sure your name is short and relevant. Use your logo as your picture. That's a really good brand thing. Um, fill out your information tab thoroughly and completely. Um, don't auto feed an RSS onto the page. I know that sounds really simple, but add a little bit more human content. Um, you know, post a, a question with it or something. Um, and again, do be authentic, engaging, and honest. Don't just um, have your page sit there and, and have nobody ever talk on it or leave comments or, or click like or stuff like that. Um, and then this is just the resource page. These links aren't live on your screen um, just because uh, of the way our sharing system works, but we will send these slides around later and they will be live on the slides. Um, this is some of the stuff we already talked about, including the video um, that watch um, and then some other articles that you might find interesting. All right. Well, thank, thank you, everyone, for joining us.